Ave Maryprisima. Uh, today I would really like to treat of a team that I think is really important and I think a lot of people need to know a little bit more about our Pope, Pope Peter III. Now Pope Peter III is really a very gentle man. He's very inspired from heaven and so what he does is he follows his inspirations. He's not there to do anything else but what God wills. So, um, you know, it, that, that should be the priority in everybody's lives to do the will of God in everything, you know. So anyway, so it's really important that the Pope do the will of God because what his decisions are really important and it affects all the faithful. So he is obviously a man of prayer. He prays a great deal early in the morning. He's praying and um, he does penance. He does mortification. Um, he denies himself a lot of things. That's something very clear we can all see in him. So anyway, something sort of concrete for you. You will see him frequently in the cathedral of El Palmar de Troya celebrating Mass. Um, he likes to lead the procession, you know, to take part in the Eucharistic procession. He's a man of very strict um, moral convictions and does all he can to protect the faithful in this question. Being a Palmarian, first of all, we gotta, you know, we gotta dress good. We gotta give good example. We have to pray hard. So Pope Peter III is really, you know, very careful about all this. So we have a rule that everybody has to pray the penance rosary every day. And he insists on that. He, he insists that also that we pray the stations of the cross. We have a shorter version, but we have to pray it every day. And apart from that, we all have to pray to the Holy Face every day. It's a small act of, the con act of consecration that we say on our knees every day. So these are the principal prayers that Pope Peter III has imposed upon the church. I say imposed as a rule because, well, I mean, a good, a good Catholic doesn't need rules. He doesn't need to be told to pray. Just the Pope puts a line you know, that we just, uh, a minimum, you know, that's the minimum. But there's a lot of people that pray a lot more in the Palmarian Church and they don't need a Pope to tell them to do that. Now, Pope Peter III is a very occupied person. Now, he works all day long. If he's not praying, he's at Mass. If he's not at Mass, he's organizing something, you know. And so, being so occupied, he, he does have very special gifts. And one of these gifts is patience. He's really patient. He's able to support a lot of problems and a lot of people and not get impatient. This is very important. So we have a patient Pope and then we have a Pope that is in peace with himself. And being in peace with himself, he transmitted to the whole church. You see, in order to have peace, you have to have a good conscience. You have to do your obligation really well. Solomon said that, you know, the greatest happiness you can get out of life is doing your obligation. If you're a mother, your obligation is take care of your kids. If you're a father, you got to take care of your kids. If you're a kid, you got to do what your parents want you to do. You got to obey them. You got to, if you're a teacher, you got to, you know, teach people and put attention. Whatever your obligation is in life, you've got to do it well. And doing it well, you will have peace and you'll be happy. Now, that's exactly what the Pope does, his obligation. He prays, gets his masses done. He doesn't leave, lead or try to lead an easy life. He does, he lives like a Carmelite, like another member of the order. Eh? All the members of our order are, are people who are dedicated to prayer and penance and work. Those three things, more or less. Eh? We do have our moments, obviously, where we like to relax and uh, talk to one another. But most of the time we're preoccupied and not, there's not much time for that. But, uh, but, you know, in the religious order, we do have a very happy sort of life, you know. It's, you see, the problem is that people who do not understand the religious life, they just can't imagine why we're happy. But it goes back to this question of doing your obligation. 
you know, dedicating yourself to do what you're obliged to do. So the Pope, um, being a man of peace, he is a man of peace, as I have said, because he's got a good conscience. And he has a good conscience because he does what his obligation obliges him to do. Eh? He takes care of the church. And he is very dependent on offering the true faith to the whole world. What I mean by that is we have a big website with loads of different languages. We have missionaries that go around the world celebrating Mass for the faithful. And, you know, he has to take care of a lot of things and support, support the faithful, support the missionaries, support the nuns. He's got to support everybody. And he's got to take time for everybody. So the mission of the Pope is just something very big, you know. It's not just a question of taking care of what's close to him. He has to have in his mind what's going on in every country around the world where there are Palmarians. So his mission is really big. So, you know, what we really like about him is that he patiently and peacefully takes care of everything. So we do be amazed that he doesn't get all upset when things go wrong and, you know, being a Pope, a lot of people can be onto him and, you know, with their problems and he has to solve everything, you know, and, well, you know, he can just trust, you see, he trusts in God, trusts in Mary, and he's able to cope with everything, you know. He puts himself under the inspiration of the Holy Ghost. And when he doesn't like something, he prays about it until the light comes, you see. So he prays a lot. That way, obviously, he gets close to God and closer and closer, you know. So we're really privileged to have such a wonderful Pope in Pope Peter the Third. That's just what I want to say about him. I'm not going to um, exaggerate anything. I'm just saying what he is, you know, just so that everybody know that we have a father figure in the church and that all those who would like to come into the church, they can come and, and meet him for themselves. But, you know, that's, that's all a process of becoming a member of the church and becoming a true son of the Pope. A true son of the Pope is a member of the church that is willing to obey him and help him in any way he would like or he would need. Yeah? or becoming a good daughter of the church, a true daughter of the church, the same thing, you know, you just, you try to please the Pope and everything because of his importance, because he represents Christ on earth, you see? He represents Mary on earth. The Pope is the heavenly figure on earth. So we gotta do our best to please him, to help him, you know, not, not get in his way. When he, you know, when he makes a, a decree on anything, We've got to, you know, obey him and be quick to support him and not go complaining about little details and little things that we're told to do. And a, lot of, a lot of times for small little things, people complain, you know, so it's very important in life to accept decisions when they come from the top, you know, when they come from the Pope, uh, we got to, you know, obey him and support his decrees. Yeah, because the Pope at the end of the day is the man nearest to heaven on earth and he's inspired by the Holy Ghost. He's got the infallibility, which means that he can't make a mistake when he's teaching on faith and morals. And even if he's not actually teaching on those questions, he is very much assisted by the Holy Ghost in all he does. So, um, okay, just that's what I will say for this time. Ave Maria Prisima.